Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. So I'll leave you with that. It's an oil of completion. It's an oil of perfection. Now, we said it's laughter that will make you laugh. In Psalm 2, Psalm chapter 2, I read from verse 1, and it reads as follows. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that seated in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Say, God will laugh. Now, you must understand that when God finished creation, he rested. So he is not the one. He doesn't speak again. He speaks through us. And then we speak. That's why we prophesy and we make declarations by faith. It is God giving us the word to speak so that we speak on his behalf. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, God who at sundry times spoke to the prophets in times past is now speaking to us through his son whom he appointed heir of all things. So God is speaking to us through his son which is his word and his ministry. So God is not speaking. So if there's a flood coming, God is not going to speak from heaven and say, flood, stop. No, it's not going to happen. We are going to stop the flood. Like Joshua, God didn't stop the moon in his course. Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon, and they stayed in their courses. And God didn't stop and part the sea. He told Moses, you stretch forth your rod and part it. So God is not coming to laugh at the enemy. We are the ones that will laugh at the enemy. And when you laugh, there are four things that could be happening, which is an operation of the oil of joy. Sarah said, God has made me to laugh, meaning a long desired and a long anticipated miracle has arrived. And I prophesy all the long delayed desire anticipated miracle. I prophesy them they are at your doorstep and they are delivered into your hands by which you laugh in Jesus' name. Second way a person will laugh is when your enemies are being judged, which we see in Psalm 2. God says, not only will I bring to you a Manasseh blessing, I will judge all those who put you in that situation. So what did he do? He brought all Joseph's brother and made them to bow at the soles of their feet. He says, God will hold them in derision. He will speak to them in his anger. He will laugh at them. Those who have put you in the state you were prior to the release of the oil of joy in your life. Their time of judgment has come. Those who have been harassing this nation, Nigeria, their time of judgment has come in Jesus' name. Those who have been harassing our Christian brothers in the north, their time of judgment has come in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, laugh at them and laugh through us at them and hold them in derision in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Two other things that could make you laugh we saw in Psalm 126, it says, Our mouth was filled with laughter. When you reap what you have sown, your investment, when you make profit far more than you anticipate, you will laugh. And another in the book of Proverbs, he said, He, a merry heart, doeth good like medicine. So laughter doeth good like medicine. It's a healing anointing. When healing comes into your life and you are healed of sickness, you would laugh. So I also prophesy. God's healing in your mortal body. I prophesy peace into your cells, peace into your tissues, peace in the organs of your body, peace in the systems of your body, peace in your bone marrow, peace in your bone, peace in your mortal body. Let God be glorified in your mortal body. Let the healing power of God flow into your body 
and heal you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Those four things will make you to laugh. And whichever is applicable to you, your laughter has begun. By the reason of the release of the oil of joy in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. In John 16, 23 to 24, it said, Ask and you shall receive. Ask that your joy may be full. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Then he said, Ask. I challenge every one of you hearing my voice this morning. Ask God for what you want today. Don't let it be tomorrow. Ask him today. As this telecast finish, if God sent me, ask him and you shall receive because the oil of joy is resting on your head. He said, you shall receive that your joy may be full. Now, because your joy is already full, that means all they're waiting for you to do is to ask. Once you ask, you receive. He said, the hour come in the book of Amos when the reapers will overtow, over, overtake the man that is sowing. I'm not saying you're going to receive next month. As you are asking, you are receiving. Before you finish asking, you receive. Some of you, you are asking God for direction. Today, 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 God will give you direction. Some of you are asking him for mystery. Sarah asked, why is my pregnancy trouble? He said, two nations are in your womb. He told her, and this shall be the man. I told her of the future. Ask God for things. If it's material things, ask him. If it's spiritual, ask him. If it's direction, ask him. By reason of a confirmation of the word I bring to you today, God is going to answer that prayer. You are going to receive the request that you ask of God today. And today, your joy will be full in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Matthew 13, Matthew chapter 13, and I'm closing now, verse 44, and reads, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hided it and for joy thereof go sell all he hath, and buy that field. So it's the discovery of a treasure. Is access to the inaccessible. Is laying hands on the inapplicable. Is making the impossible possible. And there is a price to pay for this. But it's also a, an operation of joy. And God is going to open you to some secrets which you have never known before. He will open you and give you access to some information you have not been privy to. God will give you access to how to get some things from him. Things you have never been aware of. I remember years back I was praying Ephesians 1 from verse 17. That the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened that I may know what is the hope of his calling. And I prayed it for six months. At the sixth month, the Lord Jesus appeared to me. He said, I've come to show you the anointings that you carry, which I never knew. He said, on the tip of your fingers are this anointing. So when you want to operate it, do it this way, this way, this way. He said, in the palm of your right hand is an anointing that will tell me what it's meant for. When you're ministering, when you lay hands on somebody that has this, 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 Say, do it this way, this way, this way. Those are priceless gifts that money cannot buy. But you pay a price for whatever God demands. And it will tell you what he demands from you. Say, but I don't know. By the oil of joy, God will make it known to you. You will know what it will cost. And he will reveal to you, give me this. And I will give you that. So God is calling you to a trade. God is calling you to an exchange of butter. If you give me this, I will give you that. If you give me this, I, so you go to God in line with this and say, Lord, now that's different from the request I asked you to make from God. That's different. This is another one. But then tell God, the one I asked you to ask 
has no seed attached to it. It's just to prove that he confirmed his word. I remember once he said to me, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. He said, The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. He said, You have ever anointed with the oil of gladness. Peter said, What I have, give I thee. If I don't have, I'm not giving. So I'm giving you what I have. It's the oil of joy. I received it of the Lord Jesus. If I told a lie, then I lie against God. I've received it of the Lord Jesus. So the one I ask you to ask is a confirmation by which God is glorifying his son that truly has given him the oil of joy, which I release to you and I ask you to ask God. But this one is going to God for an exchange of the impossible to be made possible, the unimaginable to be made a reality, the unaccessible to be assessed and made your own in the name of Jesus. This is for what is absolutely, totally, beyond your entirely reach in your entire life. It can never happen except God. It's like telling Mary, thou shalt have a son. He said, do, what, but there's no man. He said, the power of God shall rest upon you. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And that's how this shall be done. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. God says, Come and trade with me by the oil of joy. And I will do what has never happened in your lineage. I will do it. This is not for everyone. This is for those who are able to. Who want to walk in the realm of their progenitors. Said, and the blessing, O oh Joseph, of your progenitors. These are people that want to reap. What your great 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 grandfather sowed that he didn't reap. Then your great great grandfather sowed he didn't reap. Then your great grandfather sowed he didn't reap. Then your grandfather sowed he didn't reap. He said in John 4, I have sent you to reap where you did not sow. He said of Joseph, the toil, you know, the children of Israel, in the real sense of it, when they left Egypt, they had no obligation because they said, borrow us gold from the Egyptians. They had no obligation. He says, it's a wicked that borrowed and does not repay. And I asked God, why did the children of Israel borrow and not repay? Are they not wicked? He said, no, it's the labor of their forefathers. He said, their forefathers worked for Pharaoh and he did not pay them. So we calculated the wages of four generations and we gave it to them. That is what I'm talking about. The wages of generations that they did collect their paycheck, they want to hand it to you. But it's coming by butter. God said, Ask me. You don't even know it's there because you are not privy or aware of it. But God says, I know it is there. The oil of joy is available to you. You know, in the book of Malachi, he says that Elijah, or the prophet of the Lord, will come before the dreadful day of the Lord. Now, there are things that must happen before Jesus comes. One, death must be defeated. Death has seven manifestations. Like I said earlier, I know death in and, and he knows me. Each time he sees me, he tries to hide and run. He knows me very well and I know him in and out. He has about seven manifestations. Now, I'm not going into the details. I told you that is coming. But when you see somebody is in coma, that's an oppression of the spirit of death. Or a stroke is an oppression of the spirit of death. That's a death of a member of that body. A coma, a vegetable, or a stroke, that is an oppression of the spirit of death. He said, death and grave, they work together. But I'm not going to go into that. Death and hell, they are companions. I'm not going into all that. Miscarriage is an oppression of the spirit of death. It's the spirit of death. And that's why most women, when they're pregnant, have the threat of miscarriage. Of course, they go through the medical... Um, Advice which they follow, but at the same time, I give them an oppression that shall changes the spirit of death and they go on to give birth. Praise God. So, like I said, death is an oppression and it's one that must be conquered before Jesus returns. But I found out another thing that must happen before Jesus returns. In the book of Malachi, it says, before that great and that dreadful day that the Lord will return, said, I will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest the Lord comes 
and he smites the earth with a curse. And when the earth is smitten with a curse, nobody in that family will move forward. Nobody in that family will prosper. So a lot hangs on the heart of the fathers being positive towards the children for the prosperity of the household. And I enjoy mothers. Please make sure you don't pitch the children against the fathers. Lest your child takes a gun and kills you in your old age. Because the Lord will smite that family with a curse. It's in the book of Malachi. Rather, no matter how bad those men have been and irresponsible they've been, make sure their heart is not against their father. Let it be at peace with the father. And the father be at peace with the children. So that the blessing of the Lord can flow in that family. It must happen before the Lord returns. That's how serious fatherhood is. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. So I encourage all men, bless your children today, lay hands on them, prophesy to their lives. Those of you who are yet to give birth, what would you like to have? Five boys, one girl, ten girls, one boy, call whatever. If you don't know the name, say my daughter, my second daughter, it shall be well with you when you come. You will come to this earth in peace. You will walk this earth in peace and great joy. Prophesy ahead. Those words are eternal. Even careless utterance you make is eternal. It's waiting for you on the day of judgment to come and give account of it. How much more words of blessings and words of prayer. So I encourage you, pray for your children. Bless them. Husband, bless your wife. Um, fathers, bless your children. Um, brothers, bless your sisters. Amen. Let all the men just bless today. Let no one say anything negative. And God Almighty will help us to rid the earth of those curses so we can have very fruitful and prosperous families in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the oil of gladness, which is headship, and that is what is coming your way today, is expressed in different forms, but I'm just going to concentrate on one. For example, the oil of gladness is expressed in mastery. And in any aspect, in any occupation or any form of skill, anywhere you have mastery, the best hand normally heads. The best of them heads is the head of them all, though it does not necessarily apply. Now, another thing that causes headship with the oil of gladness, use it to express that headship, is called favor. In Psalm 18, Psalm 18 from verse 43, he says that God has delivered me from the strivings of the people. He has made me the head of the nations. A people whom I do not know shall serve me. As soon as they hear my voice, they submit to me. Now that does not naturally make sense. For people who do not know you to approach you and ask you to head their nation. Now, people vote for who they know. They vote for records, they vote for antecedents, and they vote for uh, achievements. When you're going for an election, you want to head a nation, you campaign. You don't just come, say, my name is so-so-and-so, vote for me and go. No, 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 no. No, they have to use the, the, the records they have to make you their head. In Psalm 18, it says, you have no record, you have no antecedents, you have nothing for them to relate with, and yet they ask you to head their nation. Only favor can do that in the life of a man. Now, I, I want to give you a brief testimony. Uh, at one time, many years back, I was walking on the streets of Lagos, and I was accosted by two men. Uh, you know, it was now, I think maybe they are kidnappers or something. I was wondering, who are these? And they say, sir, we just noticed you as you were walking. They were standing by the roadside. 
And so somebody just told us, you're the right man for the job. I said, which job? I said, oh, we're an advertising industry, um, agency and we need somebody. We just want to take your pictures. Please, can you just come in was by a studio? Well, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just followed them, entered the studio. They took some pictures and they said, we just like you. We just, we don't know. We just like you. We just want you for the job. Wow. <laughs> I've never posted. I've never done um, modeling or anything. In fact, when you look at my shape, it doesn't even add for modeling. <laughs> so I was wondering what's going on. And they took my pictures to advertise an oil industry in a magazine. And they paid me fees that took up my rent. Oh, goodness me. Normally, what were they supposed to do? They should look into the entertainment industry, look for somebody that is popular, somebody well-known. And people started calling me, oh, we're looking at this oil industry. We have the, uh, the calendar, sorry, the calendar. And we saw your picture. You were before the refinery like you own the refinery. I said, okay. And that was how I was used for that, just like that. On the road, they didn't know me from anywhere. Favor, that's what favor does. Now, Joseph from prison and Pharaoh, the Bible says God wanted to make Joseph head, gave him wisdom, which answered all the questions. That is a skill, but it's not enough. And the Bible says God gave him favor. And by that favor, Pharaoh made Joseph head. By the oil and grace of favor, and it's flowing through this medium now, headship is coming your way in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 5 verse 12, that the Lord blesses the righteous and encompasses him with favor as with a shield. I ask myself, why was Mary chosen? The angel said, blessed art thou amongst women. That's simply saying, among all the women, let's say of this generation, you stand out to be uniquely singled out for a unique blessing. Why? He said, you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. That's what favor does. The Bible says Jesus was with favor with God and with men. Favor with God and with men. The Bible says Esther found favor with the king and she was made the queen. Now, this is a foreigner. She's not even a Babylon. She's a foreigner, a Jew. And she was made the queen. That's what the oil of gladness, it expresses itself through the oppression of favor. And that has anointing of favor, it's flowing. It's flowing and it's flowing. You will be chosen. Your file will be chosen. Your proposal will be chosen. Your request will be addressed. Your requisition will be sanctioned and passed. Why? Because the oil of favor, a man spoke to me, said, I did an interview for a job application, and it was the worst interview in my life. He said, all the questions they asked, I didn't know. And the person interviewing said, said, said to him, said, you, are the, you are the most loved, you are the one we want most. He was wondering, he said, what's going on? He said, you are the one we want. And that's how he got the job. A young man was telling me, he said, he applied for a job, and he wanted to get a job. He's been trying to get a job. So he called me. I told him, you may not like this. I said, send a seed for God to open into the miraculous. And he connected that favor with a seed. He said about a month later, not in Nigeria, outside the country. He said about a month later, he was doing a job in a bank out of the country. And he said they told him, if this particular woman does interview for you, you have lost. You cannot be employed. He said, nobody ever passes her interview. Nobody. Just pray. Of all the people that will do your interview, it's not this woman. Guess who did the interview? That woman. And the worst part, he said, when they asked him questions, he said he knew he didn't answer well. He said he just knew he was in trouble. He said at the end of the interview, the woman said, you are the best candidate I ever spoke with. He said, what? That's what favor does. And she asked him. You know, he was, I think, guess was doing cleaning job. She asked him, can you start tomorrow? <laughs> he said, yes! And he started the next day. And he has a fantastic paying job. Wonderful. Headship by favor. Headship by favor. Anywhere you turn to, your right, your left, behind you, before you, let favor work for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Favor means unnecessary 
unusual and abnormal interest without any adequate reason to support. It means to give advantage without any validating reason. I don't know why we just chose you. I don't know why we just want you. They picked me on the road and I was in front of a magazine, <laughs> sorry, of a calendar. It's called favor, favor by the oil of gladness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I declare you favored in the daytime, favored in the night, favored in this season, favored in the next season, favored everywhere you turn to. May you find favor in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. I bless your holy name. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.